G'day punters, welcome to Victims of the Punt, where well, we're headed to uh, for the Hunter, the Newcastle, beautiful, beautiful place in New South Wales, two hours north of Sydney for those uh, playing away from home. Um, we've sacked Pistol this week, he's too busy sort of playing with himself, his hair, and uh, just hanging around ponies, fillies, and the mounting yards of uh, Perth, you know, double header, Ascot yesterday is at Belmont today, I think it is. And uh, into them for for the carnival moving forward. So maybe we might let Pistol back on next week, but we replaced him with um, who I think a bit controversial, but I think is the king of the mounting yard, uh, Roberto Scurry. Uh, Rob, how are you? And how's the hair? Oh, it's, it's, a big, it's a big hair. I've had to. Like, I've done a bit of work just to try and keep up with you two today. Well, well, well speaking of big hair and big big blokes. I saw, I was at the te- playing tennis on Monday with my normal Monday game. Guess who was filming an ad or something there? Mark Filipousis. The poo. Yeah, yeah he, he was there. Poo. Yeah, it's, it's you. I thought, I thought it was you at the start. Yeah. Then. And, but yeah, he was he was sort of like having some shots behind the green screen. Still looks fit as a trout. And, Is that right? Yeah, still good yeah, co- yeah imposing, imposing figures. He's a big boy. Um, amazing head of hair like you, Mark. <laughs> and, and and like Mark in phenomenal Nick. I mean, yeah. um, no, no. Let's. I'm being serious. It's amazing what uh, if you put down the packets of darts and replace that with a vape, put down the schooners and replace them with seltzers. What it'll do to your rig. <laughs> you are a testament to it. Um, full credit to you. Looking outstanding, parading, excellent. Uh, last week, Pistol put on a bit of a clinic, find the winner of the hot Danish in Mark. Who's a belter? She's a belter. Yes. Uh, Rob, you uh, sort of thought he might have stole it off you? Well, look, we had a big crack at it first up in the invitation. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I quickly blew up in, in the chat. You know, well, I'll never know. Maybe it should have won. But, yeah, I think it was a pretty weak invitation. And I somehow fell into the, the second horse, lavish, lavish Girl. I think it sent out the first four. In the, in, the, in the number. Weddy. In the, I didn't know that, but I just thought it rose didn't watch the play. Hey, Mark, he didn't watch the show last week. It was pa- it was playing on pace and, and it sort of it just seemed like a good half a good bet. Anyway, she's the belter was it was too good and I think Mark hats off to you, Mark. You you tipped the uh, the Hawks thing that ran third at, at a big price. Yeah, uh, more was that more secrets in that race? I believe yeah. so. Yeah, yes. more secrets. Uh, I think you, uh, uh, Pete gave it a chance as well. Yeah, very good run. Um, yeah, Pete actually. Um, was pushed into tipping she's a belter by your comments from the invitation, uh, Rob. He was said last week. Um, he... Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, yeah. Moral, vi- moral victory for me. You bounced back though with El- Ellsberg in the big race. Yeah, I, 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 full credit yeah. to you. I, I think a lot of people were a bit grey about that. So the um, Mark can speak for himself, but I'd imagine a little bit of wobble there mentally just to get the final tick from you up to eight right. hundred meters. Mate, on this day, uh, I've got a long, long history with Ellsberg, and um, one of one of my bigger, sort of smarter bets was in the Spring Stakes at Newcastle when he was about seven dollars. He went around, and I just thought he'd lead and and he'd give a really good sight. So you know, a good one for the bet fair in play, where you know I could maybe hedge a little bit back at a shorter price. Guess what he did, Dicko? Guess what happened? Snick slowly away, missed the start. Uh, hunted forward, got beat, I don't know, half a length by a wall of thing that never won another race. Uncle Chris. Yeah. He's been good yeah. to us, Uncle Chris. Yeah, and me especially. No complaints here. I was You're being right, though, sarcastic. That's, that's um, how I approached the race. Was I, I wanted to back Ellsberg because I didn't like the map for all of indices, and but I wasn't going to back it. Coming off two big peak runs in the Epsom and the, um, the Prelude, Unless Rob gave that final push, so that's that's how I use Rob stuff a lot of the time. Is I do my own form, obviously, but um, in races like that where you don't have all the pieces, it gives you the final push over the edge, and it got out to a good a good price, and it was a great bet. Yeah. It's been a fascinating spring in a way that, um, like, with all the pop up races, which a lot of races are pop up races. Like that's what I think gets a bit confused with the narrative, and it confuses me as a younger person to racing. Like the Golden Rose is a pop up race. You know the blue diamond, but now they've been around long enough. They're kind of part of the scenery. But yeah, how how the two rack stood up, the Epsom, which we thought was a bit of a joke, that's really stood mm. up. Mm. I mean, Ice Bath came down and won the, the Empire Rose on, on the biggest day of racing in, in Australia. Ellsberg, yeah. like that, that 
form has stood up. Yeah, I, I wonder. I mean, I suppose there's still prestige attached to those races like the Epsom and to a lesser extent the Turak. I mean, that'll, that'll always, I suppose, get them some sort of field, um, despite the massive prize money on, on offer elsewhere. But, you know, whether that's going to happen every year or this year is an outlier when, you know, you've got, I mean, what's the Turak? Is Turak a million or so or something like that? Not sure. Yeah, I think they put it up. It might even be, might even be three million now or two. Oh, million is it? Okay. There was still a juicy fat field in the Turak. Oh, the real the, the, one of the races that suffered from the changes was the Epsom, but maybe it just whittles away the weaker horses and leaves the cream of the crop. Good, it, it, yeah. it is just that time of year as well where the best horses are in the middle of their preps, and you know, if you are going to target a big pop up race, is maybe you know your first up run should be in September, not in August. Now, I think that's also something we're going to look at this this weekend and this on this show with the races in Newcastle, and we just did a couple of. Uh, shorter shows for Cranbourne, and we saw it last week. Some of these horses that have been up forever, like the Ellsbergs, you know, are they vulnerable? Just having another run, have another throw at the stumps because the prize money is so good. And are you going to look for fresh blood? So you don't have to. You don't have to go to Cranbourne or Newcastle to find that. Flemington last Saturday with both yeah. and, and Nature Stripper only racing because there was private eye. My Oberon. Yeah, yeah. private eye looked the best horse in the country two weeks prior. Yeah. Yeah, and I, going I, to the ball once again because of the because of the money. I'd yeah. stick with it though, moving forward. I think um it'd be fascinating what they do with that horse next preparation. Getting better. So better. If, what's your top three right now, Rob? I'm going off script, but who cares? Uh what's your top three horses right now in Australia? Yeah, let's say Animo's gone overseas. Animo's gone. Yeah. Um not gone, he's a champion. Well, let, 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 let's let's say mid, middle distance horses. I, I, you know, I've got like a pretty close run thing between the likes of like uh, Ellsberg, SF, Sydney form, uh, with Cascadian. Is there Moonga? I think they're all around the same sort of level, and they're all sort of sixteen hundred to to two thousand. Um, Law of Indices is not is coming up a little bit, um, but yeah, Correct. Private Eye. If I could own one, it would be Private Eye. Sorry, that's not really answering your question. Oh, you never do. Nature, you just, nature, just do you, baby. <laughs> nature, nature strip. Um, yeah, he's, he's the best. Yeah, but you know, he's he's nine and yeah, he's nine. I guess he's a bit. Is Marzu the most exciting sort of sprinter we have at the moment? Because the no. other ones are a little bit older, Mark. Um, your eyes well, and your facial expressions saying definitely no. I, what are you talking I, about? I hope not. I mean, look, he's he's young enough that he might have another level in him. Uh, if he's peaked he's, and he ends up the best sprinter in the country, it's not a vintage prop, but uh, he could go to another level. We could put him right up there with, the, you know, the, the non-black caviar types we've seen in the last 10 or 15 years. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's almost a blank slate. I mean, mm. okay, we've lost Animo. Uh, Thank God. Lost, lost top ranked. Um, Thank God. Nature Strip, I think the jury is... Half out because I mean this was a funny prep because he'd been to Europe, but on the other hand he's eight, thirty seven, eight. He's he's eight. eight. Yeah, he, he's, he's nine old. in August. That um, you know the nature strip of twelve months ago, the way he travelled in that race at Flemington would have won by two and a half or three lengths, and there was just nothing left. Uh, now that could be the, the European travel and a, not a long enough spell, and next autumn he might be back to his best because he's a. I, I lean that way. We know Uncle Chris is a. He's a simple guy, loves his KFC, running around Rose Hill, likes to keep it simple, repeat the process, and he got away from that going to England and Which he had the horse just hundred percent. I'm glad they did it. I still think it's a more successful prep than than winning an Everest and winning that race last weekend, going there and winning mm. that race. Like that's that's full credit to him. Yeah, it was a brutal run in the Everest too he came off. So look he could easily come back and just carry all the glory and win a what fourth PJ in the autumn, which mm. would be something, uh, getting links like there. Um, as to the middle distance, you know, Zaki's won the, the big race the other day. Um, he's an old horse too. So I think the field is open there in the absence of Anima. I'm glad. Uh, I, I really hope that Rob's horse, Private Eye, heads, heads back to the sprinting ranks. I think it's wide open. Like you, mm-hmm. you, You're questioning Marzu. And also, if I owned Private Eye, I'd be steering right clear of the 600-meter races because the All-Star Mall is, uh, is going to be key. It's obviously the, the potential of cup winning champion. I don't know Keith. if we post, I don't know if early markets are open, but he'd be right up the top. It's, it's yeah. um, 100%. Uh, 
Allegatic Bloods are he's, he's more than a cold horse. He's a, he's a proper trier, proper weight for age horse. Um, He'll probably go the horse. I'm all big Keats and Allegator Blood. The Blood, Keats, Keats, oh, the Blood. There's nothing in it. Promoter's dream. Mm, bring it on. Um, mm. All right. I've, I've dribbled and yarned there. Uh, readybet.com.au, Australian owned, operated bookmaker. If you haven't tried them, you should. Download the app today, gamble responsibly. Mark, what sort of, um, what's going on this week? Well, uh, as we touched on before, we can't really go into specifics of our promos, but let me just tell you, there are a lot of them at the moment. Whatever your sport or racing um, fancy is, I reckon there's some chance you'll find something here. But to get more details, you'll have to uh, download the app, join up uh, and log in, and then all the information will be there for you. I'll just say there are a lot of them. That's, gamble that's responsibly, but create an account and gamble, gamble responsibly. responsibly. Away from the prom, uh, promotional stuff, um, a bit like uh, a bit like your joint, Jack, we are taking favourites on at least a couple of times a week, uh, promising to be top odds, at, at least joint top odds, on a couple of favourites in Melbourne and Sydney every Wednesday and every Saturday. Uh, what about Pike in the last? What about Pike in the last? Someone's got to take it on. Oh, you mean just... Take them on blind every week. Yeah, well, and, ha- and hands you know the odds. Well, maybe we could, we could be like a WWE tag team, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get a chance oh, to can... catch your breath sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, like in Russian Perth, roulette. Like <laughs> in the last in Perth is just the sensational time slot for the uh, Saturday afternoon drinker slash punter too. He's on uh, Devoted in the last, which is a $2.20 shot. Oh, in the cerise and white, if you don't mind. <laughs> it doesn't matter what oh. price you bet, you are going to be standing that for something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mailbag Bloodstock, we uh, we purchased two horses yesterday, Wednesday. Uh, the, the focus horse for us at the moment is All England and I'm Invincible. Uh, gelding out of London Lolly, who's a half, who Chautauqua. Uh, he was a very expensive yearling. He's won twice, once in Melbourne, once in Sydney. He heads to uh, Gavin Jesus Bench Good. Um, he's a 67 rater, so we think we can place him to uh, recoup our purchase price pretty easily. If you're interested in getting involved, there's not a lot left already. Uh, to reserve a share, contact Jono, J O N O, at the mailbag.com.au. Rob, you were saying he's just an outstanding type. Outstanding uh, for a Wednesday kind of horse. Yeah, I find him regularly on a Wednesday. Um, you know, but yeah, why I am invincible. He looks like a proper city horse. So let's, can we, can I, can I just call him a proper horse. I, think he's oh, a proper horse. I, I backed him when I heard you talking before we started recording. I thought this was related to all England. I didn't know it was all England. That's uh, how much is left? How much is it? Uh, I backed about, him day one in Sydney. That's why I'm, I'm afraid. I'd say it's going to be about uh, PDS fun. pending 2005%, something like that, mm, around okay. that mark. Um, okay. So, okay. You might have to knock me out of the way to uh, to get one of those shares. Good luck. <laughs> big, big, I wouldn't. Th- you'd knock the poo out of the way, Bill <laughs> Pusis, if you're watching from before. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, let's focus on Newcastle, boys. Newcastle rails in the true. Uh, Rob lives in Maroubra. He's king of Maroubra, but uh, he's got a deep seated connection to Newcastle. His father. Uh, I believe resides there and actually owns Token Capitalist, who goes around in race no, seven. No, what's what's the weather report for Newcastle this week, please, Rob? Uh, it's going to be glorious. It's been lovely here for about a week and a half. I'm expecting they might even water the track. I'm not sure. I'm really happy with Newcastle uh, in terms of the track. They've really turned around um, what they've done for the members. If the vibe is so much better, especially the, the security guards. They, they, they make me happy. They're helpful. They're courteous. Good day. Enjoy it. So looking forward. Going on the fast train and treating myself for the extra pay the extra ten bucks. Um, oh, talk about that, airborne. Uh, talk no, about no. airborne. That's all the Keith prize money rolling in. <laughs> yeah. Um and that'll get that'll get me to there, you know, only thirty minutes before the first. So I'll have to I'll have to, you know, I'll have to scoot to see the two year olds. We found uh Russian conquest at eight dollars in that race last year. Um, so yeah, I would be very keen to that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it bolted in. Uh, three wide the trip bolted in eight dollars. Um, but yeah, looking forward to getting out there. My folks are, unfortunately aren't there, so I'm going up and back in the day. But yeah, I, I wouldn't miss it. I think it's the best track in New South Wales. I'm very interested in what Mark thinks how it's going to play. 
Well, True Rail at Newcastle has, uh, of late, on softer tracks, been, uh, I would say, fairish to a bit off fence. However, just to grey us up, there has been a couple of, because they, they, the rail, the big tracks of the rails, the rail moves out quite a lot before they bring it back into the True. Um, a couple of times they've done that in the past, like when New, Newcastle Cup Day last year, 2021, went moved back in the True and the rail was dynamite, which I don't want to see. Uh, but, um, and I don't, I'm not assuming it will, but just be a bit aware of that after the first two or three races if it is starting to play that way. It can happen on a firm track back in the true, but just the way it's been playing on like soft fives and so on over the last, well, most of this year, I wouldn't be too worried. Okay, we're going to kick off, guys, in race number seven, which is the spring stakes, the NZ Bloodstock spring stakes. If you're listening, guys, want to fly them over for the sale, Jack at the mailbag to come to the year. Um, the spring stakes, the ready bet market, please, Mark Road. Okay, we have number one, Basquiat at nine. Uh, two, Robusto. We're a little bit shorter than the market at 550. Three, Save It Eight for me. We're currently top at $3.20. It looks like about $3 general at the moment. Redina is five. Uh, now, I did this slide at about two o'clock. Uh, token Capitalist was $14. Then Rob sent a bet to his subscribers on it. Now it's about 10 with us. And that's his old man. Owner's that's, bet. that's the effect he has. Uh, six Kazalak, six dollars. Um, onto the roughies. Some of these aren't completely hopeless. Got Candos Cosmos sixty one, Pierosa twenty three, Soya Battle thirty four, Marilia twenty three, Starliner sixty one, Miss Fabergé forty one, and Talento one hundred and fifty to one. So you're keeping Robusto safe. I like it, and here's why. We're going to look at a replay of it winning at Randwick on Melbourne Cup Day, or is it the big dance day? Yeah, where are we here in the run of honey things in future, uh, depending on which state you're from, or potato cake, potato scallop, but uh, on big dance day, if you like. Uh, sorry, um, there's Robusto in the Cerise of the Ingham family coming down the outside of Randwick from a long, long way back uh, in a race that wasn't that quickly run. Didn't, I thought in running he was in a bit of trouble. He was leaving it a bit late, but he's been very good over the last 200 in particular, and the data reflects that. Um, he's drawn wide again. I expect he goes back, but uh, if the track's playing fair, I think he's got to be in the finish. And J-Mac goes on too. Can't hurt, can it? Doesn't he was in some I've done a fair work. bit of research on it. It definitely doesn't hurt. Yes. That's a... well, well, he's I, got I the... think... Sorry, mate. He's got the pick of about five rides here, and he's, he's gone for that one. Um, I did see that one, and I was filthy myself not backing it. I was half pleased that the favourite was declared a non-runner in that race because the $25 was, was whittled down to 11 Um yeah, he he improved from his. I, I backed him at Warwick Farm on the Wednesday. He improved, and I didn't back him. I was on the second horse in that race, so it was. It was I was pretty pretty angry with myself afterwards. Um, but yeah, any grey up about J Mac? Oh, Mark wouldn't get this, but Rob, he's had a kid three days ago. He's not sleeping. Might be punching a couple of darts. Keep the weight down. It's not an mm. ideal setup. He is the he is the great one. Look, I'm, I'm sure they've got, you know, a maid in there or, you know, it's three, a, probably. A, a doula. A doula. Um, a doula. Yeah, a doula helping out. Um, an au know, pair. He, he'd, have a, he'd have a doula and an, and an au pair. Yeah, well, whatever, whatever, whatever it costs. Yeah, you know, he could, he could bill it to Godolphin. He could do it, bill it to Chris, you know. Uh-huh. It'd do cool more. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm, sh- I'm sure he sure he's have all the help he needs. But um, to answer your question, I'd say I wouldn't worry about that. Too much, May, maybe he, you know, maybe he might be quite as brave in, in the future. Might take that run thinking of his kid. I don't know. That's just bullshit speculation. But yeah, great rider. <laughs> the next replay we're going to look at is the early favourite in Save a Date for Me, who absolutely P one double five in at Goulburn, Mark Roden. It did. You can see it peeling to the middle there in the white cap. Um, yeah, this is a maiden at Goulburn um, against pretty limited opposition, to be fair, but it has done it in style and untouched over the last well, had a little look. He's looking around. A little peek over the shoulder. There's a fair bit of looking around going on here. Um, hard to line up. I can um, I can sort of see why you just make it favourite and say, right, this has got sort of unlimited upside. Uh, which may well be the case. It's very hard to price accurately off that because you do have to project it forward. I projected it forward, but I've only got it about equal with Robusto. So um, for that reason, given the current prices, I have to be with the horse in pink. 
But look, he is the kind of horse, and it'll be interesting to see what uh, it'll be the first time you've seen him, Rob. It will be interesting mm-hmm. to see what you make of him. But it would not surprise me in the least to see him win because that you know it was pretty progressive there, didn't he? Very progressive. I love these horses. I love watching what the market does to them in the sort of like in the morning and then that last sort of five minutes. Uh, yeah. Talk us through your top five, Mr. Roden. Uh, my top five is uh, number two, Robusto, for the reasons mentioned. Um, I have him pretty close on my figures, well, my adjusted figures to number three, save a date for me, but the price differential leads me to lean in um, number two's direction. Rodina was never on the track in the Carbine Club at Flemington. He's got some chance. Um, Basquiat has been a bit disappointing, but he gets a very good map and uh, Nash uh, on Saturday. And I do have to put in Token Capitalist somewhere uh, on the grounds of the map because there's not much speed here. I think Token Capitalist's only competition for the lead is a horse from Dubbo, or was it one at Dubbo last start, turned by Tracy Bartley Marilia. I think those two will take it up. Um, Token Capitalist will either be lead or outside lead and might only be a moderate speed, so he, he's going to get his chance. We'll go through my top five next. We don't have anything from Rob because the mailbag.com dot are you accountable late mail betting advice delivered to your phone from rob's hands we've got eyes on ponies he's a winning machine if you like winning on ponies the mailbag.com dot you by rob's service i'm with robusto i'm with you mark i love him i like that win i think um j mac just ticks boxes i thought it would be sort of closer to four bucks um i think basquate i've probably slaughtered that but i, I reckon it's ready to run a big race i like nash um, after that, just sort of going between them, I left out the favourite because I just don't trust Goulburn. Um, put in Rob's old man's horse just because why not? And I thought Seven was the best roughy there in Candos Cosmos. You I found mean, it before, haven't you, Rob? Yeah, I like Candos Cosmos. Uh, I was on it at 100 to 1 one day at Canterbury at its first start. The trainer was very smart. He could have he could have run it at Hawkesbury, but he said he ran it at um, Canterbury. And, yeah, I backed it first up. It looked very well at Warwick Farm. And, yeah, I, I, I will be keeping a close eye on it. But I've sent a bet just because I think there's every chance that, you know, um, I just think that there's a chance that the token capitalist could shorten. He was – my dad doesn't own him. He just he was his pick of the yard in the Bondi race against Golden Mile. He thought this thing – this was just as good a type. And, um, you know, I, I had, needless to say – well, not needless, but I had the last laugh that day. <laughs> Cop that, Dad. Bang. Yeah. <laughs> The next race we're going to look at is the time-honoured Hunter. Mark Roden, mm. take us through your market, please, sir. Yeah, quite right. It is time-honoured. This is the fourth running, I think. If I think Sabatiano won the first one, so we're up to the fourth running. So it is, that's for pop-up races, that is time-honoured. Okay. <laughs> the chances are, number one, Apache Chance, 8.50, two over past 14, 3.11, 11.50 for Gemsong, 14. Five, we have favourite in the Congo, 460 from six for Lana at five. Uh, keeping bandit stats a tiny bit safe at $16, number eight. Uh, then we go down to number 11, Skyman at 12. Um, Aramayo should be 51, not 511. Um, Gravina at 16. Then the emergency start, the two interesting ones are Brutality at 19. And Waihaha Falls, number 20 at $4.80, who would be... You would yeah, think won't record. get a run because, like, there's so much prize money. He needs four it, to scratch, doesn't he? It would be a minor miracle. It would be a minor miracle if he got a run with a million dollars prize. We'll just start by saying if he did get a run, I'm going to back him. But I'm going to back him yeah. to win race nine anyway because that's what the race he's in at yeah. the moment. I think that horse is a superstar. Um, Rob, yeah. thoughts on Wahaha or as a type? Yeah. Uh, Good wet track. You know, he's, he's not. It's just a. He's, he's getting better. He's parading more more professionally. Um, but yeah, he's he's like a Saturday horse. He's, he's maybe one of the best wet tr- track sprinters in in the country. You know, he, he could win, he could win a group race on on a, on a wet track, and and he's got figures off heavy tracks, which you know, it gets you excited, but doesn't you know? I'm a little bit more skeptical about these heavy track big figures. Yeah, yeah, naughty little boy. Look at him go, <laughs> Mister. I don't do any form. Uh, the first replay we're going to look at is in the Congo, who fades after setting a, a brutal tempo in the Golden Rose. Yeah, this was. By oh, Dark which are we? Oh, you said oh. Golden Rose. Oh, um, did I meant Golden Eagle? Golden Eagle. Oh, I wish I win. Come out of the two yeah. The two rack form behind. stood up this day. Mm. Did it what? Oh, I wish I win. Could only run fifth or something in the two rack, but here he is. 
dashing clear of them in the Golden Eagle. Sorry for throwing the uh, gap. Yes, it was the Golden Eagle. There is in the red and yellow in the Congo fading to finish about sixth or seventh, but um, looking at how fast they got to the uh, home turn there, I have to forgive that. It was also 1,500. This is 1,300, uh, I think. Do you uh, like that as a setup? So, brutally run, yeah. tempo, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. faded, but wasn't like stopping. Drops back in trip. Yeah. I think um, I'll give you a, a much lower level. Uh, the horse that won the last at Rose Hill last Saturday, short shorts, uh, of exactly the same setup. Just went way too fast in front to start before. Gets its own way in front in a, a slightly easier tempo last start and won by about four lengths um, and was back. So, yeah, this what? is a much harder assignment than the race uh, that man won. But, um, Started probably a lot shorter, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, uh, it was in the, it was in the mar- in the Congo. You mean it was in the market in the Golden Eagle? Yeah. Yes, yeah, September. Yeah. Um, was, there's yeah. been one horse come out of the Golden Eagle hinged, who was expected to go a little bit better than it did. Sort of ran just below what it did in the Golden Eagle, but it's the only form reference we've got so far. And how do you handle that? End of prep. End of prep is, would be my first thought with Hinge. She, she'd run in the Epsom, she'd run in a lot of races. She was actually non from Melbourne Cup as well, so they had they had a few options with her at the start of the spring. Um, Been on the pen. Easily did just end the prep. Uh, and um, rating derived from winning on wet tracks. Now, now the tracks are dried out. I think it's it's going to struggle to win on on tracks that aren't soft because it's rating so high. You yeah, know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, mm. well, needs wet for her very best. I mean, she's okay on good ground, but um, at the level of races, she's going to find herself. Yeah, she, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. In the Congo, like it was, it was pretty well back and like. Like solid in the market in a decent race in the Middies McEwen at Mooney Valley, first up this prep. And like, like Mark Zara, I reckon it was Mark Zara. I think it was Mark Zara. He couldn't keep it on the track. Then it trialed, it just missed in a, in a $2 million race. Like it's, it's sort of, although they're not like, they don't look like great races on paper, they're bloody big prize money races it's been in. Mm. Um, you think it's sort of today or never, Rob, I reckon, on in the Hunter. In the Congo, the next race we're yeah. going to look at, guys, is the key lead up race, the Sydney Stakes. A lot of the runners are coming through this at either their last or second last start. Oh. Take it away. Uh, there's in the Congo, is one of them, uh, outside lead. Uh, yeah, I think he was favorite this day, wasn't he, Rob? He, he was, yeah, uh, that, that's it. That's when he got done by uh, rocking rock on by, rocketing right? by. That's right, uh, at any old price. Uh, he, I mean, you could argue he's, he's. I mean, this was a bunched finish, and you know, arguably he was arguably he was slightly disappointing uh, here. But um, yeah, there's a number of them uh, that he's beat. N- n- number of them that are in this field, he beat that day. That uh, just Gem Song and Brutality, and uh, a number of them came through that race as well. I'm I'm completely great up about this race, mm, it's but it's but it's such a key form reference so like almost all of them except for one two three four five six have come th- come through and run since so 12 of the 18 have run since not one of them's won one's run second but they've largely improved their puntingform.com.au who we love and use they've improved their overall benchmark next start that's very great extremely yes it was a messy race for the sydney stakes too i mean just the margins and the late sections weren't really there, I thought. So it's not a surprise to see horses come out and improve their overall figure on that metric. But yeah, I mean, I mean, where you go? I mean, you're either going from something from that sort of pool of horses, or you're you're looking at um, Alana. Yes. Now, t- Rob, firstly, give us a profile in the Congo's parade and where it's so- at this prep, and then go to your favourite horse, Alana. Well, that, that's a horse with a lot of lot, lot of upside in for luck. But in the Congo, it, it catches my eye every time. He's a, he's a flashy type. His coat's been glowing. Uh, the last two runs, he's looked super. Chestnut, uh, I, he? Yeah, he's a chestnut. with, with his, his, his tail's slightly lighter than his colour, so he's he sort of a bit of Palomino about him. The chestnuts uh, often, they're, they're the glowers. Can be. Can be, yeah. It's, it's a lo- lovely coat. I think I think he's, he's a bull, um, so he... You no, know, you should know when he, when he's when he's when he's had enough. Um, I think he's an A minus horse. I think I think he's just about just about top 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 class, but he, I don't think he's top class. Um, 
I'm I'm wary of him, but I, I think Balana's got more upside. I back Balana, thinking you know, doing that thing which you tell me not to do is don't map horses where you should think they should be. Map yeah, I remember we had a chat about this, Mark. He wanted to back us. They most drawn twenty. Like a- well, yeah, well, it, well, if you just followed Mr. Mozart across and, and went forward, then that, you know might have been three wide on the speed instead of being three wide and last where he was. Yeah. yeah. And it, anyway, I, I think it's a horse that, that's going to keep improving, and um, I think he's the one to beat in this race. Um, ingratiating was was too bad to be true in the Everest, and he's a nice nice looker, and, and maybe he can he could do something. Mark Roden, run us through your top five in the Hunter. Yeah, no idea here. Uh, I think I'm going to spec some roughies. I'll put it in the Congo on top at 460, but I've got it marked longer than that. I don't want to back it at that price. I would need um, perhaps a slightly better price and uh, combined with a strong push from Rob from the yard. If he's going uh, in the Congo's way rather than Vuana, that would push me into in the Congo, but not not an early bet for me by any means. 11-11. Um, Okay in Melbourne behind Bellamy for team last start. Well, improves into its prep. Big track suits. I think it's got a chance. I don't think A50 is any massive price, but it's a chance. Bandersnatch uh, slaughtered last start. Okay at Caulfield. I think it was before that. Uh, maps beautifully here. That's why I've thrown it in to the top five at big odds. Gem Song. Uh, look, he's getting on a bit, but uh, he's got Huey and a good barrier, and he's two out of three at his home track, Newcastle. So it's some ticks, and he's double figure odds. Overpass, I don't know. I don't Very gray. Up. Just keeps I'm going, just this horse. The, I'm falling into the second to nature strip and the good or decent enough Everest run one more time because it it was 1,500, uh, a bit like in the Congo, beaten further, but unsuited at 1,500 in the Golden Eagle, back to a slightly more suitable trip. It's got some chance. Valan is the one I have just left out for now, but I've, just, I've got it in the mix. I just thought it was it was just a pricing. I just thought I'd run some rough, throw some roughies into my top five rather than throw the second favourite in. As you said earlier, Waihaha Falls goes in if he gets a run, but I really don't think he will. Um, and as Pete Anthony would say, it doesn't end there. <laughs> and here's my top five punters. I am uh, keen in the Congo. I like the setup big time. I like the SP profile. I like Melbourne form. I like stage of prep. I think it's like D Day for this horse, and he's just going to get it done. I think Bandersnatch is flying. I reckon Gravina's sneaky flying, and it gets Buick off, which is probably four or five lengths. Um, I really like this Falana, but the market just, it was like, it was a complete gift when we backed it, Mark, when it won. Yeah, it was and, big net, price, yes. and then now I'm taking shorter prices in much better races. Yep. Doesn't make sense. Grace me up. You know, as a racing fan, I just want to be with it. But as a yep. punter, you just can't. And I agree, overpass. It's a complete grey up, but it's, this is going good. Yep. Yep. All right. Now we will roll right into our conclusion, which is our best. And value bets for the card at Newcastle, the Hunter. I'm with Wahaha Falls in race nine. We've spoken about him a bit. Carries weight. I think if, it, if weight wasn't an issue in racing, you'd be getting sort of $1.90. Um, I reckon he's really, really progressive, and I just want to be with him. Yeah, and I'm with Rob Robusto for the reasons mentioned earlier, uh, with the proviso that they can make ground because I think they're going to have to go back from that barrier. And our value bets are this weekend. Um, well, Rob's knocked off the price token capitalist, but it's still yeah. value. Uh, I'm with Sound of Cannons, who I thought was pretty good last start. Um, suited in a small field. I think it's a bit bigger price than it should be. So I thought it should be closer to sort of $8. And Mark, good band. Who have you got in race two? Uh, one of double figure odds in the highway, Radiohead, who uh, comes through the same Goulburn meeting as uh, our mate Save a Date for me in the um, Spring Stakes. And- Closed up quite well in a pretty decent benchmark, 66. It's non-highway form in a highway, um, which I don't hate. I think the favourites are all just they're just highway horses, and this one might have a little bit of something drawn for a soft run. Shouldn't be double-figure odds, in my opinion. Beautiful work, Rob. Thank you very much for coming on. I really enjoyed the conversation today. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the show at home. Uh, please remember, if you're going to have a bet this weekend and you're actually price-sensitive, download the readybet.com.au app and gamble responsibly, but make sure you're getting the best price when you're betting. Uh, Puntyform.com.au is the database I use. Rob glimpses and Mark and everyone at the mailbag leans upon to uh, do what we do. So God bless you all. And remember, remember, all England heads to Gavin. Jesus, bed's good. 
Not much left. If you want to race another one with us, please contact Jono, J-O-N-O, at themailbag.com.au. God bless you all. Have a cool weekend. Bye for now.